So um, we're going to be talking about workflows for continuum and cross-facility computing. Uh, my co-lead in this session is Tom Uram from Argon, and backup um, co-lead is Nick Tyler from NURSE, who will also be uh, helping out throughout the sessions. All right, so what is the scope of this session? So we're covering continuum cross-facility workflows, and one of the first things that we'll be looking to get feedback about in the discussion session later is what, what does this constitute? You know, what do we mean when we talk about continuum or cross-facility workflows? So the way that um, I've been thinking about this is a continuum workflow. It really is uh, an analysis pipeline or some kind of uh, workflow that requires continuous access to computing. So for example, this might be an experiment that's running that needs uninterrupted access to compute resources for uh, doing, you know, an analyzing data coming off the experiment. This is some something that we maybe think of as being urgent uh, computing, something that um, uh, really requires continuous uh, computing resources in order to, to, to operate, to get work done that needs to be done. So an exa another example of this might be a workflow that needs uh, continuous access to dedicated single site uh, computing resources. Um, that might not be a very challenging workflow for us to talk about. So that's something that we can discuss in the session uh, later on. Uh, for cross-facility workflow, we're really talking about some kind of workflow analysis simulation pipeline that hits more than one site. And so that might be uh, experiment sites and computing sites. It might be multiple experiment sites that have associated uh, computing with them. It might be multiple computing facilities, for example, uh, running something similar to what we were just hearing about in the quantum computing example, running at an HPC facility and maybe in cloud computing, uh, maybe at another uh, site as well. And I think one way to think about this is that a cross-facility workflow can be a solution for the needs of a continuum workflow. Um, so uh, you can also think of commercial cloud providers to be effectively uh, within themselves cross-facility as they often use multiple sites, multiple physical locations for, uh, um, uh, for uh, resources. Um, for redundancy. So if one site uh, becomes unavailable, then they're able to move a workflow to another site uh, fairly transparently. I wouldn't say without interruption, but fairly transparently. And that's, I think, something that's interesting for us to think about. OK, so we're going to go now through a couple of state of the art examples. Um, uh, Nick, if you're on, do you want to speak to this specific example? Yeah, sure. So this is. Um... JAWS. So JAWS is a workflow analysis system um, where users can actually bring in their workflows, which are described in terms of a, a WIDL, a workflow description language. Um, and then JAWS is there in order to help them, uh, help these users to get that workflow working on multiple sites. So JAWS will handle the um, some of the harder parts in making a cross-facility workflow, like transferring the data and allocating resources at each one of those sites. Then at each one of the sites, uh, each of the tasks in that workflow is uh, executed inside of a container to help with the software, uh, getting the software and everything running. And then data is then transferred back to the user, uh, kind of seamless. And so the idea would be helping users to have a, a workflow system uh, that is multi-site cross-facility uh, and just be easy to use. All right, thanks, Nick. So, uh, just in case you you didn't read the logo there, JAWS is a, a workflow service for the Joint Genome Institute at Berkeley Lab. So it's a, a genomics um, analysis uh, pipeline. Okay, another example uh, of a cross facility workflow that's uh, up and running at the moment is the XFL uh, workflow. This is. Um, a workflow that's taking data from the Linac Coherent Light Source, LCLS. This is uh, an experiment that's running at Slack National Lab. The data from LCLS is analyzed locally if uh, the computing needs are fairly uh, modest. But if they're running an experiment that needs a very large uh, computing uh, resource and they move their data and their analysis um, pipeline to NERSC. NERSC is the National Energy Research Scientific Computing Center. It's an HPC center at Berkeley Lab. And so we provide uh, kind of 
for the periods they need it on demand HPC scale resources for their analysis pipeline. Um, so this has to be short feedback, uh, short turnaround. This isn't precisely continuum computing, but it is very short uh, turnaround time requirements, kind of urgent compute needs. Um, this runs um, you know, over many hundreds of compute nodes, both CPU and GPU nodes. Um, the workflow orchestration is um, uh, done on a um, HPC adjacent service at NERSC. It's Kubernetes based. It's called SPIN. We're coming back to this in a little minute. Um, this is the orchestrator that uh, handles data movements. It handles um, monitoring of the workflow of the uh, job completion. And it also displays the results in real time back to the scientists at the um, experiment end station. Uh, to monitor how things are going and whether they need to make adjustments to their experiment set up for each shot. Um, and there's also use of an API for automated decision making. And these are, I call these th all these things out because these are all themes that we see across multiple um, state of the art examples of people who are, are trying to run cross facility workflows now. So another example is uh, the Balsam workflow. Um, this is something that's run between two light source experiments um, and three compute facilities um, within the uh, DOE um, complex. So it took data from uh, APS and ALS, which are two light source um, uh, facilities based at Argonne and Berkeley National Lab, and then ran the analysis at um, Argonne Leadership Compute Facility, Oak Ridge Leadership Compute Facility, and at NERSC. So this has a similar kind of um, configuration as uh, both JAWS and uh, the LCLS workflows, where their agents run at each site, at each uh, compute facility, which interface with the local job scheduler, which is uh, likely to be different at each of the sites. Um, and then using a, an API, which can be used to define which jobs will be run at each site. Um, so data is transferred using Globus. Um, so data is moved between the different sites with Globus and um, uh, the compute jobs are injected into the compute facilities uh, as, as they come from the light sources. So again, this is another example of uh, sort of work that's being done to try to um, organically create a, a full cross facility workflow system, um, but I think it's fair to say that each of these three examples has a lot of specialization involved um, for the use cases that they're working with and um, has a lot of uh, limitations. Was, I think I think it's fair to say that most of these have been a bit of a struggle to try to get up and running. Then of course there are many projects that are tackling specific aspects of a cross-site workflow and there's a project from um, Oak Ridge uh, called DataFed uh, which is a really nice example of um, uh, a project that's dealing specifically with one of these challenges, which is the data management system. So it federates uh, data repositories, repositories into a single cohesive ecosystem. Um, it also uses Globus for data movement and authentication, and it provides um, API uh, exposure for handling uh, movement of data between sites. Um, and some of the, I think it also answers some of the challenges that we we're just hearing about in terms of fair um, data um, aspects. Um, so, you know, I think in our discussion session, we want to be talking about all these things, the um, projects that are sort of trying to tackle the full end-to-end -end, um, challenge of continuum cross-facility workflows, as well as projects that are looking at specific aspects. So as part of the work that's been done in this, there are a lot of challenges that have come up. I'm not gonna go through this in detail. We can talk about this in the discussion, but um, there's a lot of uh, big challenges that I think everyone is facing. For example, uh, the security, the need, meeting the needs of, of, of designing secure workflows and keeping track of your identities and such across different sites. Um, orchestration is difficult, uh, data movement. Um, if uh, all sites are using Globus, for example, that can be straightforward. Um, but uh, you always run into challenges based on the sort of individual uh, characteristics of the sites, of the, the file system structure, of the scale of the file systems, of the groups and permission structures. 
Um, where you run your workflow orchestrator really matters, um, whether it's in the, inside the HPC system, whether it's um, adjacent to an HPC system, like what kind of access and uh, um, what kind of uh, line of sight you have to the, the, the file systems and the um, schedulers that you're working with. This can really vary between sites, which makes it very difficult if you're trying to design something that needs to run at multiple sites. Um, I'll just point out that containers are often sort of held up as the way to solve all your problems of running and uh, code applications at different sites. This is not always the case. Um, there are huge uh, variations between sites um, uh, based on the technologies they run um, and the individual customizations that are done at different sites for, um, for the particular container technology they're using. And I'll just say that a lot of the this the the points that I'm making here are adapted from Nick's uh, talk at the Works uh, workshop at Supercomputing um, two weeks ago. All right. So the topics that we want to cover, um, we want to talk about these challenges. What's um, what's really difficult? What are the people see as the main challenges? What projects exist? You know, I've, I've meant, highlighted a few here, but there are a lot of other projects that are trying to tackle these. Some of them are trying to do a holistic um, approach. Some of them are tackling individual challenges. And we really want to learn what's gone well in these projects, what's gone poorly, and identify through this, what are the big unanswered questions and where, where can we focus effort to make progress? What should our priorities be in this? All right, thank you.